Hello everyone, Gilly here. In this video, or this series of videos, I plan on building a JSON parser from scratch in Haskell. Now, I'm not really going to use Haskell best practices for this parser. Um, for example, I'm going to use string, which, you know, is just a list of characters, which is not recommended. It's better to use text or something like that. Um, but really the point of the video series is not to teach Haskell best practices. It's more to, I don't know, show a ground up from the ground up how parser combinators work. And JSON's an interesting example um, to parse because it's pretty clean. It's pretty well defi defined. It's pretty ubiquitous. It's used everywhere. Um, now, another little caveat I have is I'm probably not going to go into the weeds of parsing JSON. Like, I'll parse strings and certain escape characters, but I'm probably not going to worry about all these different, like, Unicode characters. Um, maybe those will be for a later video, but to be honest, probably not. Um, and then just for the first revision, I plan on not parsing uh, crazy numbers yet. Like, you know, I think you can do, like, numbers with exponents, which I'm not going to do yet. Um... I'm not going to do decimals yet, just integers, negative integers. So nothing too wild here, um, but it should be enough to provide kind of the basics of what parser combinators, you know, might look like from a simple, from a simple form um, from the ground up and using no libraries, hopefully. So that being said, if you're not familiar with JSON, it's pretty straightforward. It's a way to represent, you know, objects and arrays and strings and numbers, values. It's a serialization format primarily these days, I'd say, um, for sending data over the wire. Um, and it's pretty easy to read. People think it's a nice alternative to like XML or something like that. Um, it's not white space sensitive like YAML, but it's uh, it's a pretty neat language. It's, you know, it's decent enough for sending data at least. Um, a few quirks here and there, but anyways. So before we actually get into the parser, um, I want to answer the question, what do I mean by a parser in this video? Um, and basically, well, we can think of a parser as being a function, um, like lots of things in Haskell. But basically, for all intents and purposes, our parser in this video is going to take a string. It's a function that's going to take a string. And it's going to return back. Um, well, parsers can fail. If we mean to parse the literal true, so here's the literal true right here, um, and we get back something else, we can fail. So for now, we're gonna just say maybe. So we're gonna have a weak error type for now, but we'll make that better later. Um, so maybe it's gonna indicate success or failure. And basically, uh, we could parse something here, we'll just call it A for now. And the second thing is going to be all of the rest of the string. So that's another kind of weakness here, string to string. These don't like encode enough information to tell you the fact that this is uh, like a subset of this and it's potentially shorter. It's not always shorter because some parsers actually don't consume input, but they still succeed. Um, but anyway, so I guess a parser kind of looks like this. So for an example of what happens, um, maybe we're gonna parse, I don't know, maybe we have a parse care and it'll parse you know some literal care maybe a um, I guess in Haskell we should use single quotes to say care this is a little verbose we're not going to do it this verbose but the idea is if you applied this parser so if you actually said parse this and you gave it some text maybe a b c d your result back when you apply this parser would be just indicating success because you got your A. Um, and maybe it's got the character A here, what it parsed. And then it's got the rest of the string to parse. And that'll allow us to kind of build parsers which combine and just keep operating over the string until we're done parsing, basically. Okay, so that's kind of at the high level what I mean by a parser. So I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to use summoner. I'm going to say summoner new uh, JSON parser from scratch. Uh, sure, we'll have ball, please stack. I'm the owner. Um, it's fine. Uh, no email for now. This is parsing. Uh, no license because I don't know 
which to use. No, it's not a create a GitHub library. Um, we do want a library target. We probably don't need an executable target. We do want tests, no benchmarks. Custom prelude, no. Um, whatever it picks for GHC is probably fine. It's the default. Okay, so that's kind of nice. Um, Summoner built us out this project. So what do we want to do here? I guess in this first video, we're just going to build a simple parser. We're going to build this parse care um, so that we can parse a single character. That's probably a fine place to start on this whole project. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to our tests and we're going to start in our tests. Um, but actually, we don't have anything interesting to test yet. So if we go to our cabal file, um, let's add hspec. I like hspec for testing. And then let's run stack test just to see what happens by default. All right, so I've installed hspec, I've installed quick check, and now when I run stack test, I also copied in um, kind of the example spec. We get a bunch of passing tests, which is good. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start with a failing test here. So basically we want to describe um, parse. And then under that we want to describe car. We're going to call this parser car. And the idea here is that we're going to say it parses matching characters. So what we have here is we're going to have a property, which I forget what that looks like, but it's not too crazy. Property and then you give it a function. Okay. So we're going to have a property that given, given some character, C, and given some remaining text, if we parse care C, I've got to import, import parser from scratch. if we parse care C from C text, so in other words, if we parse C from a string where C is the first character, this should equal, we just say equal, equal using properties, just, um, so what did I say? This is gonna be C and then we're gonna have text. So that should be our parser result here. So if we run this, it should fail obviously because we haven't implemented any of this yet. Okay, parse isn't implemented and car isn't implemented. Perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say type parser of A. So here's our parser we mentioned. This is going to be a function from string, which again, string is not best practice in Haskell. It's maybe. And did I do that right? Yep. Um, maybe an A and string coming back. Okay, and really this right here is our parse. So I'm gonna make a record. And then I've gotta name this something, I'll call it parser, because I'm not very clever. Um, but anyways, that's gonna define our parse. So now if we run our tests, um, oops, illegal syntax here, because I've got to say new type, not type, it's on an alias. Um, parse isn't in scope, because we've been exported it. And then car isn't in scope. So. What does it look like to actually parse a car? Well, we're gonna be given a specific character and then we're gonna be given, uh, well actually we're not, we're just gonna turn back a parser of car. So that's pretty much all it is. Um, so a car given some character C is basically just gonna be a new parser. So we've got to turn back a parser and this parser is gonna take text. So I'm gonna use a case lambda here, which I think is um, an extension we have to enable. Lambda case. And basically the deal is if we have um, text, if we have something that looks like this, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if C equals C prime, then we're gonna return back just C and rest. 
Um, else, we're going to return back um, nothing because we were not able to successfully parse the value. And if we have nothing, if we have no values here, um, we're going to return back nothing also. So I think that's all we need for care. So if we run stack test, everything works okay, cool. Um, there's probably one other test we could add here, which is just it um, always fails given an empty string. So no matter what character we're trying to parse, parse C, if we're given an empty string, we always expect nothing. Okay, I can delete this evaluate, we're not actually using it. And then we're gonna add one other case here just to show a failing case. It fails given a different character. Um, and I don't know a good way in Quick Check to force that you have a different character other than like adding one to a character or something like that. So I'm actually gonna use the other syntax. So parse, we're gonna say car A from B, C, D, E, F. So we don't have an A starting this. So that should equal nothing. Let's give that a run. Okay, should equal is not in scope. Maybe it should be, I believe. Yeah, that's what it's called. Okay, awesome. So we have tests and we've written our first parser and basically that's it. This uh, parser can now parse individual characters. So maybe in the next video we can parse um, longer literals. That would probably be a good place to go next.